the majority of successful parlay debaters do use this style, um, and it, it should work for everyone. As you get more experience, you can definitely adapt to what you personally prefer, but this is a good place to start. Um, and I'm going to draw one page because they're identical just for the sake of saving paper, but you would do this on two sheets of paper, and you do the same thing on that. Does that make sense? Because that confuses the novices. Two sheets of paper, one for each team? N no, I, I'll explain. Okay. Um, but so horizontally, one sheet of paper, another sheet of paper, we're going to draw exactly the same structure on them, and then different things will go on them. Does that make sense? The novices get really confused about that. I'm like, okay, everyone gets it. It's two pages, right? And then afterwards, I'm like, show me your two pages. Every hand shows one page. Well, okay, is, guys. Excuse me. This is for what the debaters write out, or we as judges write out? Everyone in the round should do this. The debaters will be doing this, and you should be doing this, because a, they're going to say a whole bunch of stuff, and they're going to say it pretty quickly. So you need to be able to write down, you know, oh, this argument's in response to this one. They said these five things. Oh, but I've only addressed the first four. The last one's important, and they did say it. So this is a mechanism for checking if something's a new argument, checking if it's <coughs> responded to, and making sure you don't forget stuff, because they're talking quickly at you for like 35 minutes. There's a lot. So, so this basic structure, you're going to draw a column for each speech. And you will do this on both sheets of paper, two sheets. Uh, this is the very first speech from affirmation, where they're going to say, this is our plan, this is the standard, here are five reasons you should do the thing. Uh, this is the second speech where they're going to say, no, you should definitely not do the thing. And on the first piece of, so the entire affirmation speech, the very first one, should go on the first piece of paper. Then, half, if they're, do, if they're doing it roughly right in the structure, half of the second speech will go on the first page, half will go on the second. I will explain why they go where, don't panic. So, they're going to do what's called on case and off case. They might refer to it in a slightly different way. They might say, I'm going to respond to the aft case, and then I'm going to give my own. Um, but basically, on case means argumentation that is in response to what aft said in their first speech. Off case are independent points that aren't directly responding to the aft, like individual arguments, but they're refuting the ideas that uh, aft is saying. So those are sometimes, yes, it's the neg case or the off case. Sometimes they're called unique DAs. They're, uh, that's, that means a unique disadvantage. So this is a thing they didn't talk about, but this is a reason this is really bad. So maybe they're talking about um, drug legislation, enforcement, and whatnot. So then, and, but they didn't talk about mandatory minimums at all. So neg might come up and say, well, they didn't talk about this, but mandatory minimums are really bad. That would be an off case point. So that goes on your second page. So you're going to go down here, and the, they should do these in chunks, right? Either the first half of their speech will be on case or off case. They shouldn't be jumping back and forth. Sometimes they'll do that, and it's more difficult to follow. Um, and that's something you can say in your preferences, is signposting when you're on and off case is very helpful to me. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So they're going to, we're going to have some arguments here. We're going to have some arguments here. We're going to respond. Now we're on the 2AC. And this, all of the speeches after the first one will go on every page, or on both of your pages. So they're going to respond to the responses. Uh, so they say, we have to stop demon marijuana. They say, it's not that bad, actually. We don't need to stop it. There's no point in that. It's not very bad for you. It's like better for you than alcohol, and that's legal. You say, no, it's super bad. It, it's a psychoactive drug. We can't allow that. It's going to get to the children. So you're going to respond there. They'll probably have also made the off-case argument that, like, it's, you know, it's a very, the way the policies are enforced is really racist. That's super bad. That's harmful to our society and marginalized groups. So then hopefully in the off-case, on your second sheet, they'll respond and say, no, it's really not. You know, technically it's not only if you're black you go to jail. And uh, so it's fine, which is... Not a super great argument, but they have to say something. Uh, so then we'll go to the 2NC. This is the last constructive from opposition. So they'll say, no, it really, it, like, really, it's not demon marijuana. It's not that bad. Like, it can be used in lots of good ways to treat, you know, medical conditions. It's not, it's not so bad. 
uh, and they'll respond and say, like, no, even though technically it doesn't say only black people with pot go to jail, that's kind of what happens, because people use drugs at the same rate, but the imprisonment isn't the same, the sentences are longer, blah, blah, blah. So they'll have responded to the arguments. The second one is the off case. Does that difference make sense? Mm -hmm. I know I went kind of quickly, so is anyone confused about the first four speeches and what goes where? No. Great. So, this is the first rebuttal, given by opposition. This is the second rebuttal, given by affirmation. So, theoretically, I guess you could write this in the other way. I just write the one in R on top. So, the reason that this isn't a full thing is, one, that it's shorter, so you don't need the whole page, and third, or er, second, that uh, they shouldn't be making too much direct refutation. So, when we have the, like, demon marijuana argument here, they're going to respond and say, no, it's good. <laughs> and we're going to go back and forth, and you will flow it across. So they might have five arguments, and you can write them next to each other, which makes it visually easy to see, oh, yep, they responded to demon marijuana, they got it. And then they will respond here, you can do that. It's also, it's easy... Uh, you can like circle a blank space if they didn't respond, mm -hmm. something like that. So hopefully, there won't be very much direct refutation happening here. They should be giving you things like voters saying like, okay, judge, there were three really important questions in this round. One what? well, I guess the example I gave you there are two. Uh, there are two really important questions. Is it demon marijuana? And is the enforcement problematic? So they'll say, first, we're winning that it's demon marijuana because, and we're winning that it's not problematic because, blah, blah, blah. So they'll give you voters, and it shouldn't be line by line like, well, they said because of this study, they said because of that study, and they said that, like, it melts your brain. They should uh, just be giving you big picture level stuff rather than you're going to need to be drawing a bunch of arrows. However, you usually get a little bit of that, so you can kind of just, like, if the argument's down here, you can kind of just do that. Pop quiz, what do you do if all of the arguments were responded to? Nobody dropped anything. Did you do anything about that? What? Well, like, but, but nobody dropped anything. How do you decide who wins, then? Better arguments. Yay! Yeah. Yay. You get to actually analyze which one You get the good. sticker. <laughs> so, can I, just, I love it as a comment or a question, because I... I, I Go for it. I, I, I use this format. I did a little differently. I did two columns for one NR, one AR. Yeah. Column, but Personal preference. This Whatever. is just, just one way. Big day page. But... but uh, of like the six debates that I that I judged last week, um, one was clear and I could flow it, and I was really happy when I was done. It was really I could even make a decision. It was really sorry, I felt so bad. <laughs> and then the other ones they were all over the place. Mm -hmm. I was having a hard time tracking what they were even talking to, mm -hmm. even when the first one was clear. Mm -hmm. And and it was, I, you know, I think it was just they were they were, they were just like the novice and disorganized. Mm -hmm. That's all I could conclude. Oh, but I was having a hard time tracking it on both sides. You know, when they were going back and forth, I was trying to make it clear on my sheet, but I was having a really hard time because they were talking about stuff that was on, on the second page and then back to the first page, and I was, you know, really trying to. Yep, those yeah. are fun ones. So, <laughs> the issue there is that they probably sure. don't have very good signposting skills, which okay. is what we call when you say, My first argument is it's demon marijuana, my right. second argument is blank. And then you should also do that when you're responding. You would say, In response to their first yes. argument, I have. Three responses. Great. One, two, three, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they should say, okay, judge, I'm going to start off case. That signals, go to my second sheet. And mm -hmm. then when they finish with that, they're going to say, okay, judge, I'm going on case now. And that should mean, okay, go to my first case. Sometimes they'll say things like, cross-apply this to the on case, mm -hmm. which is more difficult for you, but sometimes they're trying to save time, mm -hmm. where arguments do make sense in both places and they don't want to repeat them. Mm -hmm. So cross-apply, I mean, it's a fairly intuitive word, but in case, you know, you have like one second to figure out what it means, cross-apply means put this in the other place too, right. on the flow. So if the first negation argument also conveniently refutes the second affirmative argument, they'll say when they're giving their first argument, cross-apply this to their second. Mm -hmm. Because not only is this offense for us, it's an argument for us, it also refutes their argument, because for all these reasons. Uh, one of the tips we give to debaters for trying to figure out what off-case to do is think, okay, what are the like parties that are interested in this? Uh, if it's a school policy, maybe they talked about that it affects teachers' 
uh, and students, but maybe they didn't talk about how this affects parents mm -hmm. or local businesses that depend on education um, or the workforce or the future because of like an educated group or all these things. So there, there's always someone that's affected by something that they're not thinking about. Or maybe, maybe they magically addressed every group. Maybe it's a really limited thing. They might make um, like a philosophy level argument and say, this is just wrong to do because it's not how government should operate or something. So just something that they haven't addressed. All right, then. Real quick, just on the point of the difference between off-case and on-case, this is kind of tangentially relevant and pretty relevant to judging, um, there are the differences between defense and offense. Uh, so defense means just saying they're wrong, not saying that they're like making the thing worse. So you might say, we're going to solve all the climate issues with nuclear power. A defense argument would be saying, well, that, that's not going to work. It's not going to fix it all. Uh, but a way to turn that into an offensive argument is saying, well, it's not going to fix it, and we're going to think we're fixing it, so the guise that we're fixing it is actually worse because we'll stop taking action to do more in the future, which means that we're actually worse off than we would have been. Right. Okay. So offense is proving that the thing gets worse or there's a unique bad thing that's happening, and that makes it a lot easier to win. If you're just doing defense, then you don't have a lot of ground to win on. Offense is really what wins you around. Yeah. Yeah. Offense so, is we win, yeah. defense is we're not losing, we're not the most wrong. <laughs> right. So just theoretically, if they never said anything of substance, defense could win you the round if you're an egg, because it would mean that the AF didn't prove their burden that the resolution is true. But that's rarely the case. Usually the AF will have at least one offensive argument that wins, so the NAG should have some offense of their own to compete with the AF offense. And yeah. then you get to decide which one is more important. I think a good way to explain it here, can you hold? <laughs> no, 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 just, I just don't want to get any... What, what do you want? I'm going to use this paper. Oh, the back side, got it. Okay. So, this is neutral. Equilibrium, no one's <coughs> winning or losing. When, so AF comes up, they make a bunch of arguments, and the line I'm going to draw is going to represent neg. So neg is like down here in their chance of winning when AF has made all these really good arguments. Defense, best case, brings you here. Offense does this. And then AF will do their own defense that'll try and bring, everybody's always trying to bring it back to neutral and then throwing in their offense. But. Some, some more, I guess, debate-savvy judges will say that if theoretically the round ends on this line, that they have to default neg because, hey, you know, uh, neg didn't lose, and AF never convinced me, so I have to vote neg. I, if that's really the case, usually uh, you can always justify a reason for voting neg up here, right? It, like, if, you should never be at this line. There should always be somebody who's winning. Right? Um, but yeah, that yeah. gets different schools of thought on that one. Okay, I think that's about it. Does anybody have any questions um, before we... Just that last, I'm sorry, real quick. Mm -hmm. Just that last point. Basically, AF has to argue change, and change mm -hmm. is hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, sometimes NAG will argue change in the form of counter plan. Yeah. Well, so I can understand that, happens. but I'm just trying the 60-40 split in terms of wins and losses. Basically, AF... I, I mean, I've never heard of AF having to argue for the status quo. It theor theoretically could happen, but it doesn't. So they always have to prove change. Neg doesn't always have to prove right. change. They can elect to prove change. I think it gets gray in there. And obviously there's, you know, there are many different judging philosophies. One would be, you convinced me. And another is what we call judging on the flow. So that's saying... You could have said it in a really cool way, I really liked your speech, but you really didn't address this thing. There are harms left on the table. I can't, like, you're not winning the argumentation. I think right. most debaters uh, consider an on-the-flow judge, judge preferable and more fair because mm -hmm. right. you're judging on what ob as objectively as possible happened, mm -hmm. where just saying it the cool way is re like, that's really hard for a debater to be like, I don't know what she thinks is the cool way. Mm -hmm. Some judges think it's great if you're cracking jokes. Others are like, you are not taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. so, so that's where you could win on low points. Like said, yeah, that's a great chance for if, I think it's generally, um, 
the more acceptable philosophy to judge on the flow and then have your speaker points reflect, but you know, you missed this one argument, but your speaking style was amazing. So that's, that's why we have speaker points. And don't worry, you're not ruining their lives if you vote against them. <laughs> yeah. Like, they can, in fact, often, your, the, the speaker point boost that they get from doing well can set them over the edge if they do well in other rounds. Oh, sorry. Like, if, if a tournament is breaking to octofinals and they have a, more teams uh, that qualify based on record alone, you know, three wins, two losses, for example, uh, to get to that stage, speaker points is what breaks the tie. Yeah. So if they're really beautiful speakers, but they drop the ball once or twice, they'll still break if you give them good speaker points. Speaker points are very, very important. Okay. Yeah.